The Oxford Dictionary's word of the year for 2011 was squeeze middle. It was the group identified by Ed Miliband as needing a bit of tender loving care, working people, often working long hours, he said. Mr Miliband famously struggled to define the group. He said it was a round average income, not on six-figure salaries. Well, hard-working families have long been politically appealing. Then Theresa May famously talked of jams, they're just about managing. Then jams very recently became ALFs, Ordinary Working Family, O-W-F-Fs. But it is only now that any government has tried to pin down the concept. As part of its thinking on grammar schools, the government has tied itself to a definition of who they are. It's the group of working families on below average income, but not living uh, on benefits. Is it useful to think about this group as a defined tribe? We'll discuss that shortly, but first, here's Chris Cook. Today, we got some clarity about an important question. Who exactly are these ordinary working families that the government keeps going on about? We do want to start to provide a clearer analysis of the situation, of how these children of ordinary working families are faring in our education system and for me measuring how our wider reforms can do better for these families and so better for the country. This group, the ALFs, are successors to a previous favourite of Theresa May's, the Just About Managings, or JAMS. Well, let's just think about who we're talking about when I talk about the Just About Managing. These are people who have a job but worry about their job security, who have a home but worry about paying the mortgage. Who then goes in the jam jar? Who is an ALF? Well, the government has long had a definition of poverty for school pupils based on eligibility for free school meals. It's also now defined the wealthy. That's children from families earning more than the median. Everyone in between is a jam or an ALF. Below median income, but not on free school meals. So what's median income? Well, it depends. The median income for a two-parent family with two teenage children is £33,000. For a lone parent with one young child, it's £17,000. The amount varies with your family type. Education purists have been puzzling today about why it is that the government is so interested in these so-called ALFs. And that's because the research that ministers have published doesn't really make the case that the ALFs have been particularly overlooked. So, for example, the ALFs, unlike the very poorest children, don't seem to have particular trouble getting into good schools, be they comprehensive or selective. And while it's true that across England, the richer you are, the better your grades tend to be, and that's a particular problem for the ALFs, it's not unique to them. It's a problem for the whole education system. The ALF analysis, though, helps the government sell grammar schools. A lot more ALFs get into selector schools than the poorest. But education researchers remain sceptical. We've looked at the outcomes for all children living within selective areas and factored in the losers as well as the winners. What we found was that where you have an area with a concentration of grammar schools, the children who don't get into those schools actually suffer a GCSE penalty. That's by comparison with similar children who live in a comprehensive area. And what we see from this new Ordinary Working Families group is that while they may have fair access to grammar schools, actually still the majority, around three quarters of them, would expect not to get a place in grammar school. And that means that they would not be benefiting, they would be in the group that are missing out. Ms Greening today hinted at measures to address the fact that grammars do take disproportionate numbers of wealthier children. But the politics get a little muddy here. Some of her supporters don't want her to push too hard there. I certainly don't think quotas are a good idea and I'd be concerned to see a, a dramatic reduction in the pass mark. I think we should be uh, pragmatic about how we do this, but I, I certainly think it's reasonable uh, to say to existing grammar schools and I hope to new ones, uh, let's try our hardest to make this uh, system as fair as it can possibly be. Uh, what we're really trying to do is make sure that opportunities are open to everybody uh, who can benefit from them. There's another reason to focus, though, on the jams or the ALFs, politics. 
to you. In focus groups all the time, people talk, they define themselves as the people stuck in the middle who are too well off to get the support that poor people get and not well off enough to manage without it. And they feel a bit neglected by politicians. It looks like it's, very very it's certainly helpful for this Prime Minister to pitch to people in the middle. They may be a more coherent group at the ballot box than they are in the classroom. Chris Cook there. Well, Philip Blond is director of the Respublica think tank and one of the brains, in fact, behind the Conservatives' big society strategy, if you can remember that. Polly Billington was special advisor to Ed Miliband, who as Labour leader promised to stand up for the squeeze middle. Um, Polly, the, the jams and alps, we're just using them interchangeably. We actually slightly prefer jams because they make better graphics than alps. But there was, a, there was a, a bit of a shift in government emphasis when they... Well, were... as far as I understand it, they, there was a shift because when they first... When the, when the Mandarins, who I know are not particularly popular with Theresa May, actually started looking at what Just About Managing looked like, A, there weren't enough of them, and B, they were too poor to actually be vulnerable to, uh, to switching to voting Tory anyway. So that's why there's been a slight right, so shift. So ALF is a slightly broader... It's slide, a broader yeah. term, um, and, it inclu and therefore it includes more people, and it does go further up right. the income scale. Big question, though. Is it useful to focus on this group? Because we are talking probably about a third or more of people at school. I mean, this is a third of families, Philip. Well, I think it's worth asking, who has politics been about, you know, since the time of Mrs Thatcher? And I would argue, predominantly, and for the most part, it's only been about the top 10% and the bottom 10%. And arguably, all policy and politics has really been in the interest of the top 10%, and the concern for the bottom 10% is exculpatory and done so to justify that settlement. So I think the concern with something else is more than welcome and is desperately and urgently needed. Because if, unless you can actually speak to, to those who you haven't spoken to before, things like Brexit, things like Trump going beyond Britain, all become unexplainable. But it's very clear that what we have are significant groups in this country who feel that something unfair is being done to them, who feel they are right. being ignored. And so it is not wrong to try to, to centre policy around them. And I think, I think, in part, you know, this is to be welcomed. Right. Isn't that what your former boss tried to do, Polly? Well, I think is that... Is it the I, same analysis that he I, was I, using I, at I the don't, time? What I think you've got a problem with here is you won't be able to... You'll get unstuck if your politics and your policy un, are unaligned. So pretty much everybody will think of themselves as being part of the squeeze middle. That was part of its campaigning allure. The same with the just about managing and the ordinary working families. People think they're ordinary even if they're extraordinary. They think that they're an ordinary working family even if they're not working. They think they're a family even if they're not a family. So 20% of people on £70,000 a year think that they are struggling. So you can include everybody. If your policy only affects a small number of people, then the, everyone else will think, well, hang on a minute, I thought that this was for the many, not the few, and I'm not entitled to it. Okay. That's where things get unstuck. And what you have here, with, particularly with this grammar school policy, which in principle I would be against anyway, but you've got one where only a third of the places are available for the 50% 50, 50 poorest people. So uh, it, how can that be seen as a progressive and fair policy when two-thirds of the, po of the places are going, going to, to be kept other. for the 50% yep. that are the richest? But look, Philip, isn't the, the, the basic question is why would you focus on the people who are sort of between half and 20% rather than the bottom 20%? I mean, what, what is the effective argument that says I should be more worried about a person who's, at, you know, the, the 60th in the list of poor people rather than the person who's... Well, you, might, you can deploy any, a whole range of arguments to, to, to make this point. I, I repeat that these are the people who've been ignored over the last goodness knows how long. I mean, I thought Ed Miliband, who's made some startlingly great contributions to conservative thinking, <laughs> um, really hit it right with the squeeze middle. But where Labour went wrong is because they came with a small bore offer, essentially only speaking to those on very low incomes, trade unionists or those on benefits. The key point is, if you look, take, let's go really macro, look at Milan Brankovic's now famous elephant graph, which shows basically over the last 30 years that globalisation hasn't benefited middle or working right. class people. It benefited the super it's benefited rich. It benefited the super yeah, rich. And it benefited the poor and the, and and the, the, poor, and and the yeah. poor in the third world. So what, what he, he makes the argument, I think, quite convincingly, that, that 
that these people haven't experienced any real increase in, in incomes for a very long time. So that's why it makes sense to speak to them. Not only that, but if you actually look at modern Britain today, Britain is like a ladder where the rungs on the ladder are pulling further and further apart. And unless you're really at the very, very top, you're experiencing relative decline or relative stagnation almost anywhere on that ladder. So people feel wherever they are, and it's, it's it, it, you know, the middle is, is by definition, Definition long. People are feeling okay. penalised. So I think go it's good poly politics. And if the Conservatives come up with a big bore offer, which I would encourage them to do, so they don't sacrifice I, I, I've got policy on. But I don't. On, but I don't know, think this is that. And this is that. That's part of the problem. If you're talking about something which everybody identifies with, and yet your offer doesn't actually meet that smell test of, am I going to get anything out of it? The only way you can persuade people to to that everyone for everyone else to consent to giving money to a particular group of people is that it is in some way in the national interest. Okay. Look, I want you to and give me an example. Won't be the case I want an this, example of, a, apart from grammar schools and the yeah. way it's being deployed, yeah. what is an example of something you would do that you would say, this is not about people in the top half and it's not about people at the mm. bottom, but it's people in between. Okay, so give me just one example okay. of a policy. Massively expend, uh, expanded uh, maternity and career rights for women because women when they leave a job uh, they go often they and they want to look after uh, their children as many do they often go back part-time lower wage and no longer on a career path so if we create a massively expanded career offer so that they have responsibilities their employers keep them at the research curve their employers keep educating them where they even go in at a short okay. place of time that would help all women in that in Holly, that have you space. Got, do you think there's anything useful? Can you I've, think of an area where... Well, I think there's one... Uh, the financial security more generally. I mean, I think Phil, Philip's got a very good point on that. But if you think about financial security more generally and being able to access work that is more secure, because work is becoming more flexible, that actually means that people spend more of their time feeling a little bit on the edge um, and making sure that people had somewhere, that something that, would fall, that they could fall back on, not forever, but while they are flexing between jobs... The fact that more people are experiencing that flexibility, not just your hipsters are on their laptop, but also the people who are standing on the street corner well, waiting to be picked up Let me build on that work. and give you another Very one. Briefly, Philip. We have no through life education yeah. option for people. We educate ourselves to the only extremely intensely up to the age of 21 and then nothing. Yeah. And so what we have to develop, and this will be another jams policy is a through life education office so that anybody can retrain at any point in their lives and unless we have that with, with what coming with robotics and ai people are going to suffer lots lots to say on the jams and the abs thank you both very much right it is going to be a hugely important weekend